Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Janak. Today we're looking at the week of July 27th to August the 2nd. If I'm not mistaken, there is a full moon on the 2nd of August. <clears throat> and this full moon is actually called the Sturgeon Moon by the Native Americans. And it's just called that way because apparently um, it was easier or is easier to... Um, catch them at that time but the sturgeon is also one of those animals that can actually swim against the tide just to get to the bottom where it is the most um where it feels the most comfortable so before we go into the overall energy having that full moon on the second with the association of the sturgeon is just the first message here is to say to realize this is not going to be a massively difficult week as long as you remember to go to your safe place right <clears throat> and very likely it will be reflected in the readings or in the in the star signs for want of a better word now let's have a look at the overall energy and like i said we're looking at the week of august the 27th to uh, sorry <laughs> july the 27th to august the 2nd 2020 let's have a look what the overall energy brings us <clears throat> this is a week for all of us, because it's the overall energy, to focus. We have the Shaman of Birth and the Hunter of Vision, which means now is the time to manifest. If you want new things, um, manifest them now. And that's, that's what, what, what the Shaman of Birth is. And the Hunter of Vision means just look into this more than once. Don't just go like, okay, you know, manifest manifestation time, I want this. But... Um, Repeat it numerous times to the universe and say, like, you know, get me this, get me this, you know, that's my goal and um, keep keep on going. It's a good week um, for um, continuously asking for it, for want of a better word. Right. So, so far, it's all good. Doesn't mean it always stays that way, as we all know, because the point is we need to learn. So if we all just had, you know, weeks and weeks off, um, wouldn't really work that way. So let's have a look at the first star sign of the week, which is Leo. We are still in Leo. I think until the 23rd of August, it is the star sign of Leo. Let's have a look at what Leo has got coming this week. Okay, now Leos, you have the leopard and the jaguar. So the first message is, you still keep hiding. You're still in that space of saying like, oh, I'm not 100% sure here. If I belong here, I'm not 100% sure if I can say anything. And what the guides are saying is, the more you're hiding, the less you are part of something. Right? So, you have two big cats, the leopard and the jaguar. By default, they're predators. That doesn't mean that they're overly aggressive. They only are aggressive when they actually need to eat. Right? So nothing here suggests that you should go um, overly aggressive on things. Okay? So that's just, that's just that. So this week for Leos, come out of your shell, trust that what you have to say is valuable and become more um, a part of what's going on around you to um, allow yourself to be in the middle of anything that can be manifested for the better. All right? <clears throat> that was that. Going into Virgo. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Okay, healing week for Virgo. You have the bear and the elephant. And the bear it is, in a way, it's, it's a sign of almost invulnerability, if that makes sense. Because the, the bear is always the, the animal that says you need to heal. But it's not about being vulnerable, it's about realizing that healing is actually powerful and it actually gets you to a better place, if that makes sense. So embrace it. Easier said than done, but embrace it. And then you have the elephant, which means sometimes you're in the way. <laughs> okay? Because to a certain extent, you remember everything and you're not letting it go right. Right? So this week, allow yourself to heal. Okay, really important. Allow yourself, uh, allow yourself to heal, and um, and learn to let it go. Okay, so that was Virgo. 
going into Libra. So far it's short and sweet. Okay, card falls out. It wants to be read. Libras, whatever is going on in your life, you are not alone. Okay, you have the heavens and the maze mother. The heavens is basically a symbol that um, your ancestors or some of your ancestors are around you. What the guides are giving me is a lot of um, feminine energy. So very likely there will be loads of ancestors around you from your, from your female past. If that makes sense, you know. So it's not just your mother's side, if that makes sense necessarily. It could also be um, females that stem from your father's side. Um, but there's a lot of female energy around, which also is the energy that is much more, what's the word, conscious, much more conscious of your own emotions and your own feelings. And there's no testosterone <laughs> everywhere that messes shit up. You understand? So what they're saying is for, for Libra, it's really important just to say like, yeah, I, I know myself worse, I know I'm not alone in this, because you have the Maze Mother, and the Maze Mother is basically a symbolism uh, for um, a deity that has a massive field, which is anything and everything that is in your life, and she puts the, the seeds there to manifest and grow what will suit her and sustain her, and anyone that she feels is worth having in that Field, in that maze of life, so to speak. So what the guides are saying, manifest for you and realize when you manifest for yourself, whoever is associated with you, they are, they are protected by the same manifestation. I always say that to people. Sometimes they say like, oh, we're, I'm going to move and I want the kids to have a great school. And that's exactly what you get. You get a great school and nothing else. right? So don't do that. Manifest for yourself really really important okay let's go into scorpios drawn to the same deck okay <clears throat> there is a standstill week for scorpios the best way to describe it is that you feel there isn't anything happening well and you might be right there isn't anything happening that doesn't mean you have to worry about things or hoping that something else is happening at some stage because the moment you start longing um, your energy actually goes lower because you want something you feel you need something that completes you if that makes sense here here it is you have the beaver and the arrow so the beaver is basically the builder of bridges and um, so what they're saying to you is you will you will not burn all bridges. This is not a week to burn all bridges behind you, but this is a week to quietly reflect. And then you have the arrow, which means quietly reflect on your life. Keep going as new opportunities will present itself. The more you stress over stuff, the less will work. Okay, short and sweet for Scorpio. Going into Capricorn. Let's see what we got. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, <laughs> Capricorn. You have the kid fox and the brown bear. This is a week for you where you also need to, sometimes I, said that, I say that every week or every time I record, there's a lot of overlapping energy in the, the star signs. <clears throat> and for Capricorns, what they're saying to you is this is a week where you feel a bit, or might feel a bit boxed in, a bit um, stuck stopped a bit less is happening for you right and then you have this is the kid fox it's obviously a fox that lives in the desert where you have less opportunities and um, you know the rules of survival are just different and by default he can't leave the desert if that makes sense and um, <clears throat> so what they're saying to you is it's not that you have to accept it full full you know flat out but what they're saying is don't fight it it's just a week of realizing new things that you maybe may be manifested or manifest this week take some time to actually come to fruition 
So don't stress, don't panic, because you have the brown bear. I said that earlier with the bear. What they're saying is, this week, try not to panic, try not to stress, and allow yourself to heal. What I'm seeing for Capricorn is a lot of water, which means it's renewal time. It also means that there might be loads of tears. Remember, tears are sacred medicine. You hold it in. The only person or being you harm is yourself by holding it in. Allow yourself to cleanse yourself, okay? That was Capricorn. So far, it seems like um, that many star signs going through or going into healing, if that makes sense, which is actually not a bad thing, right? So, um, that was Capricorn, if I'm not mistaken. Now we're going into Aquarius. I'm going to spare you that little song, The Age of Aquarius. Well, sometimes I, I sing it. <laughs> Here we go. Interesting. Because Aquarius, there's another bear. So yes, there is overlapping energy here to say this is a week to heal. And Aquarius are asked to allow yourself to be calm and to heal. The, the downside, in a way, is for Aquarius that your healing is not imminent. This is a journey that you're on. And the journey will continue for quite some time. When the guides say for quite some time, that doesn't mean it is a year. It might just mean for some few Aquariuses that next week you will get different messages that actually help speed it up. But what the guides are saying, because you have the polar geese, and the idea of the polar geese is um, she can fly thousands of miles before she lands again. Right? So that is, that's the symbolism of the polar goose. And so um, that's what they're saying to you. You know, you don't have to rush anything. Yes, you're going through a time um, that feels low, if that makes sense. But you're going through it knowing that healing is happening while you go through it, right? So be calm and just allow things to happen, right? That was Aquarius. Now we're going into my favorite star sign, which is my own Pisces. Always excited. Oh, and they give us three cards to look at. <laughs> right? Okay, here's what we got for Pisces. We have the Spirit of Empowerment, the Unterstell of Gale, and the Shaman of Sorrows. Okay, the Spirit of Empowerment mean, means that this is the week to um, keep going if you... Um, and I can make this... I can see this from my own point of view. I um, turn the corner, if that makes sense, you know, both in, in, in my uh, relationship and both in my health. I'm, I'm getting stronger. I'm feeling so much more content. And so that's the empowerment. And the guys are just saying, yes, enjoy that feeling and keep going, right? And then we have the ancestor of skill, which means this week we've got nothing to prove and we've got nothing to explain to anybody, right? Just keep going. We also don't need to learn anything new this week. We will be fine. And then we have the shaman of sorrows, which means it is the week where we let stuff go that is difficult at times to let it go. And sometimes, you know, you can let stuff go that needs to go, but then you feel empty, which is that sorrow part. I don't know what to put in to this void, <laughs> if that makes sense. And all they're saying is, don't even think about it yet. But this is a time where, where actually it's a good week for Pisces because I feel as we're getting stronger, it's easier to deal with stuff so things can go. So I don't know, obviously, you know, we're, I'm hopefully reaching more than, than, than one Pisces here. Um, but the feeling that I get is that for some of you, there is a passing uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a relative coming that to me feels like a close relative, which is probably... Um, a sibling or a parent, right? Not manifesting anything, but what the guides are giving me is for all of us who are in a situation where you have um, a relative that is probably elderly, that is not well, and you're not sure if they improve, it's just to hope that they do. Send them all the best and just allow them to pass if their time is up, okay? And if it doesn't apply to many of you Pisces, even better, okay? That was Pisces. <clears throat> now we're going into Aries. You probably hear noise in the background. This is just my washing machine making a bit of a, of a racket. <clears throat> so that's all good. So going into Aries, you have the Bobcat and the Panther. Two animals that both love 
to have a vantage point from, from which to hunt, from which to see the world, from which to assess opportunities. In other words, for Aries, this is a week to step back a little. Right? If there's too much going on, just step back a little and allow yourself that vantage point. You know, you could be in a group of people and everybody is talking, there is some sort of an issue. And if you just step back, you kind of go like, okay, so where is this coming from? What exactly is going on here? And you can actually do that without having to necessarily leave the group just to well, get a better standpoint on it, a better vantage point. And that's what they're asking you to do. Just to, um, to assess your life from a point of sort of semi-detachment and then make your decisions accordingly. Okay, that's that. Going into Taurus, draw to this deck. Here we go. We have the rum and the peacock. So, the rum is an animal that tells you you can be on top of a cliff on two legs and don't fall. So what they're saying is this week, don't worry about anything. It's not going to be a massively negative week. It's also not going to be a very difficult week by any means, if that makes sense. And remember, Tauruses, no offense, but you can be your own worst enemy. And overthinking is unfortunately in your star sign. And so it is very much part of your DNA. And it normally does fake all for you. So what the guides are saying is don't overthink, right? Just trust. As you are climbing the mountains that you have to overcome, you will get to a better place and everything will be fine. And then you have the peacock. The peacock, by default, is an animal of wisdom and an animal of um, vision. But you can either have a vision that you want to um, see, see through, see happening, or you put up your wheel, right? And that wheel, as beautiful as it is, the peacock put, puts up the, the peacock puts up the wheel because to him it has a thousand eyes. So these thousand eyes that are, that are on there is are designed to confuse predators, to keep people at bay. So what the guides are saying is your your being this week will very likely um, employ something to keep people at bay right so that's up to you you can take a breather but because you have that 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 rum animal which is sort of really um divine life for want of a better word what the guides are saying is you do not need to hide at all right because this week they're not going to throw a lot of stuff at you the trick this week is not to overthink right and remember, you will probably go back into your thoughts now and you will notice that sometimes you overthink about the very same thing and you may have done for years. And there's no solution because when you overthink, you don't stop to analyze. So it's, it's literally pointless. So what the guides are saying is that's the learning curve this week to take things as they are, deal with them as they come and don't always think of worst case scenario. Right? That was Taurus. Now we have Gemini, Gemini and Cancer left. And here is Gemini. Gemini. So you have the monkey and the goat. Okay. <laughs> this is important. Um, the monkey is the animal that, that, that represents our past. Right? We, we all come from the stars, if that makes sense. But so do our animal kin. And we still have evolved. We came here as specks of dust. And we still have evolved. And so we are very much primates. And so because they came before us and because primates take a long time to learn, they're just like humans. If nobody teaches you certain things, you can't do anything. It's not like, you know, you're born and you can just run uh, like, like many animals can. We need to be taught sometimes over and over again before we actually um, are being able to tie our laces and uh, use a fork uh, properly. Right? which is just the way the primate is, okay? You can't rush things, which is uh, one of the messages here, is to say, you know, don't live in the past. And the feeling that the guides give me is that this is about um, the feeling that, oh, I failed. 
I'm, I'm not good enough and um, I can't do that, right? So if you believe it, if someone said to you, you know, oh, you can't do this, you will never be good at this, right? Even if you feel, well, they got a point, <laughs> right? That doesn't mean you can't have another go. And it doesn't mean just because they think that, that you are, that you have to take their judgment and live by it. So this is the week to say, like, I, I refuse to live with the judgment of others that has affected me in the past. Okay? Really, really important. And then you have the goat, which is another animal like the rum, that tells you you will climb higher and you will be perfectly fine. Also, you know, the animal, the goat has horns. Every time you have an animal with horns or antlers, it means you're quite protected by your guides. So it's actually not that bad. Okay? That was Gemini going into um, our last star sign of the week cancerians <laughs> another animal with antlers um because there, there is the ancestor of illusion here right and as you can see this is a goat with um antlers the ancestor of illusion means that if you have areas where you feel i really can't do that right um and I, i'm not comfortable and I will never overcome this, you manifest that very thing. Because the ancestor of illusion means that for a long time you, you mistrusted, if that's the word, yourself to a certain extent. And the guides say you have to stop this. Right? Manifest what you want, go for it, even if it is at first um, something that sounds a bit out there. The example is this. Um, a lot of people that I know, you know, because I'm from Frankfurt, where we have this massive airport, um, and everybody wanted to be, you know, back in the 90s, like, oh, I would like to be a pilot. Well, you know, it's not that easy to be a pilot, right? But maybe you can be something else working at an airport. So the point is, if you ask for something that you know, and sometimes it's just the eyesight, they're saying to you, well, you can't be a pilot with, 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 with an eyesight like this, you know? So it's not necessarily something that has to do with any knowledge. It's, it might just be a physical thing. So the point is, you can still go for your dreams and what the universe is doing, because they ask you uh, or they help you with finding what you're thriving at, is to say like, just go for it. And because you go for it, your energy goes there, that in itself opens doors. You don't have to be top dog. And also because you work for it, that's the important thing, because you work for it, you will no longer allow people to um, make fun of you, if that makes sense, because you studied it. You work for it, right? You put time in to have that knowledge. And you will tell people who think you probably you can't do this, la la la, you will put them in their place, which is another learning curve, right? Because you have the shaman of purification. And that doesn't mean you, you, you tell people, no, 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 I put them in their place. But the shaman of purification is to say this week, I mean, it, it should probably be every week, but this week in particular, um, July 27th to um, August the 2nd, um, this is the week where you say, I purify myself from anything that people think of me because I'm not who they think I am and I don't give a rat's ass to, to begin with, right? So that's important. It's, it's just realizing, you know, you are who you are. And, um, and another thing that's really important here, what comes to mind is truth needs no defense. You do not have to explain yourself. So this whole idea of explaining yourself is coming in and um, you are not, you are not, forced to answer any question if you feel like what the fuck are you asking me this for <laughs> you understand that you know you you are your own person the good thing about cancerians this week because you have the understanding of illusion what the guides are trying to show you is that you are capable of, capable of so much more and you have probably been told numerous times by by people and by situations that you can't achieve it. And the guys say, the guides say, now it is time to just disregard all this and go for it. Right? So, awesome. That's all we have time for. See you all very soon. Please share this widely. It's pointless recording this if nobody watches it, right? Please, please, please share this. You can also subscribe to, um, to the channel. 
Um, thank you very much for all this. See you soon. Bye bye. So, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I forgot um, to record Sagittarius's. For Sagittarius, um, terribly sorry that I skipped you over there. What I'm getting from the guides this week for you is quite short and sweet. What they're showing me is, um, what's the word? Just an island with grass. And so what that means is if you could just try to relax and renew yourself because in my vision you're looking at the water and somehow you're waiting for a ship to come. So what they're saying is you're anticipating something and it's something you actually hope for. And all the guides are saying is hope is at times a prison. Okay, what they're saying is if you look at the water and just trust that something that is for you will appear instead of making or turning it into one thing that you want to happen, it will be much easier. So all they're saying is sit back and trust that your manifestations have been listened to. All right, so sorry again for Sagittarius to leave you till the end. Um, won't happen again. Bye-bye. <laughs>